This morning, new coronavirus cases are surging across the inland northwest. We'll take a look at the numbers and why local health leaders are concerned. And outside, we're seeing a pretty calm start to the day, but around central Washington and eastern Washington, we could run into a bit of wind and some shower activity. We'll talk about that coming up on Up With Grant. Coming up on 632 now, we are tracking the breaking news this morning, giving you a live look at the scene where a man has been found dead inside of a burning home in east central Spokane. This is a live look near 6th Avenue and South Magnolia Street, where authorities say they are not sure if the man died as a result of the fire. As you can still see, the fire is still burning at the roof there as firefighters still work to get this fire under control. We are learning new information about the body of this man that was found. We also know that there was food found on the porch that had not been picked up, and fire crews say as of this morning, the house is a total loss. Crews are also expected to be on scene for several hours, so you can expect some kind of traffic delay in that area, but right now it is still unclear what sparked that fire. As I mentioned, we have crews on scene right now continuing to gather new information. We will update you on the latest here on Up With Creme and on creme.com as well as our Creme 2 mobile app. Turning to other breaking news this morning, looking across the Cascades, Harborview Medical Center say one man is dead and another is in critical condition following another shooting in Seattle's CHOP zone. They say the first patient arrived this morning around 315 via a private car. They say a second victim arrived 15 minutes later via the Seattle Fire Department. Seattle Police say they are investigating the shooting and we will update you as more information is made available to us. We are keeping our eyes very closely monitoring this ongoing situation. All right, let's take a look outside this morning for our Monday morning forecast. Evan, it's been a it's been a bit of a change over the last few days from the heat that we saw last week to the cool that we're waking up to. Yeah, the weekend brought a little bit of unsettled weather our direction. Some thunderstorms yesterday evening. We continue to see that chance of thunderstorms today. But as you move farther toward the east around western Montana and the north Idaho Panhandle, that's where we see the bulk of activity taking place. So if you're in central Washington or eastern Washington, you have less of a probability of seeing that shower activity, but uh, still a chance of it. We're not going to rule it out completely for any of the regions as this low pressure system is very unsteady and uncertain, uh, bringing us uh, even a flood watch off toward that area. So everywhere highlighted in green on the right hand side of your screen under a flood watch until late tomorrow evening. That includes areas like Orofino and Grangeville all the way as far uh, to the east as Missoula and even farther east of that. Uh, looks like we're going to hang on to mainly dry conditions in Spokane, but the chance of thunderstorms increases, especially into your evening hours. Uh, that's really for the region as a whole. We're going to see temperatures make their way to the upper 70s, so it is a pretty chilly start to the day, mainly in the low 50s and upper 40s, but we'll make it to about 77 as that afternoon high falling just about in line with average. And then uh, later on this week, cool down before we warm back up toward the weekend. Uh, it is just about to hit 635 right now. I'll send things back over to you guys. All right, Evan, thank you. Well, here are three things to know today. This morning, Greater Spokane Incorporated is outfitting small businesses with personal protective equipment for free. Now, the one-time distribution applies to businesses with fewer than 49 employees. It also applies to small nonprofits. Gear includes hand sanitizer, cleaning supplies, facial coverings for both kids and adults, and gloves. Businesses, though, must register online for a pickup time today through Thursday at the Spokane County Fairgrounds. You can find a link to register by texting PPE to 509-448-2000. Well, we are coming off our first full weekend with a mandatory mask rule in Washington. It went into place Friday. Masks must be worn indoors and outside when six feet social distance cannot be maintained. Well, this morning, Washington Governor Jay Inslee is pausing the reopening process across the state. This comes after an increase in new coronavirus cases statewide. On Saturday, Governor Inslee said the rise in cases makes moving to phase four of reopening impossible. And eight counties previously eligible to move to phase four will remain in phase three. Well, this morning, the Spokane Regional Health District reports the local coronavirus death toll is climbing. So we're going to take a look by the numbers with Joshua. Good morning. 
Good morning, Jen. Yeah, those cases continue to surge across Spokane County. And as we look at the latest cases by the numbers this morning, we can actually see why our local health officials are so concerned. Now, once again, we are looking at the latest data from the Spokane Regional Health District with new reported cases every day. The past week actually marked the highest one week total we've seen yet. In fact, Spokane County passed the previous record on Thursday, so we didn't even hit the weekend yet. And that was the same day, by the way, that Governor Inslee was in town. 248 new cases have been confirmed over the past seven days. We compare that to the total we gave you just one week ago, 144 total cases. And if you consider that the 10 highest single day totals we've had since the pandemic first started, eight of them have happened over the past 10 days, including these past six days in a row. I also do want to point out with the data here that two new deaths were reported yesterday marking the first time that a death has been reported in Spokane County since June 9th. But there are other important numbers to look at as well this morning, including new hospitalizations. And here what we've done is mapped out all of the reported hospitalizations on a daily basis in Spokane County. And we can see that for a while it seemed like hospitalizations were being reported kind of sparsely. But as of today, we can see that it's basically been reported every day, a new hospitalization every day since June 11th. 31 total new hospitalizations have happened since that day. And to truly get an idea of just how much the rate has increased, this is the mark of June 11th. And prior to that mark, it took Spokane County more than seven weeks to see 31 new hospitalizations overall. From June 9th all the way back here, to April 19th and a majority of those cases were reported while the county was actually still in phase one. So the numbers prove that as Spokane County has continued to embrace loosened restrictions in phase two, that is why we see these new cases continue to pile up. We also see the rate of hospitalizations is now exponentially increasing. So we will, of course, keep our eyes on this data for the latest information from our local health leaders throughout the days and weeks ahead. So to come this morning here on Up With Cram, the summer of 2020 will be unlike any other, especially when it comes to how we travel. We'll take a closer look in about the next eight minutes. And a cloudy start to the day. Your forecast coming up.